Let's begin with the Zhou forms in the Zenshin Aikijitsu system. So at the Zenshin Self-Defense Academy, we teach the system of Zenshin Aikijitsu. Zenshin Aikijitsu is broken down into the four uh, combat ranges. You have your kicking range, you have your punching range, you have your trapping range, and you have your grappling range. And although it's organized as one complete art, it's taught basically separate from each other so that there's not a massive amount of stuff that's all thrown in there all together. So as an example, at the very beginning of training in Zenshin Aikijitsu, you generally begin with the Aikido aspect, which is the trapping area. Um, one aspect of trapping. There's also trapping in the, the uh, Filipino Kali system in which I've studied uh, since the, the early 80s and uh, <clears throat> well, mid, eh, early mid 80s. So uh, the Aikido is the beginnings of the, the whole Aikijitsu system. So you begin going from white belt to black belt, your first degree black belt, in the Zenshin Aikido aspects. Now, once you gain aspects, your black belt in that, then you can progress into the other ranges of combat and the other systems that uh, are, are gathered together to create the entire Aikijitsu system. Uh, in the Zenshin system of Aikijutsu. So, uh, within the basic beginnings of this system, we have a few Jo forms. Now, as a rule, I don't really personally care for forms, empty hand or weaponry. Uh, weapons are a little different because you have an opportunity to train uh, in patterns. They're not necessarily have to be forms, but they're more small patterns. Now, uh, a, a kata are basically a bunch of self-defense, well, quote unquote, self-defense moves combined together to create a long form. Now, uh, originally, these were not supposed to be uh, a single massive fight uh, amongst many people. So when you when you uh, generally hear kata, people say, "Well, you block this, you punch here, then another person comes over here, and you block this, and you punch this." And that's truly not really what katas were designed for. You're only fighting one person, and they're always facing you. Uh, there are many many aspects to katas that I don't care for and the way they're taught I don't care for. The applications of them are not necessarily what I care for. And they teach you things that aren't really those things. As an example, blocks. There's no such thing as a block ever. You never block anything. You either evade it or you attack it. Uh, if you see a block, as in like maybe an upper block, a middle block, or a lower block, uh, those aren't necessarily blocks. Those are either strikes or some application to a throw or something else. They're not blocks. Uh, but that's the way they're taught. So I personally do not care for forms in general. Uh, as well as if you're going to learn the hidden techniques in the kata, then find them and train those specifically. Don't worry about this whole massive routine of movements that appear to be this big long fight. Don't. I don't see the sense in that uh, personally, but because of the standardized aspects of how people expect things to happen, uh, a small amount of Joe forms in particular uh, weaseled their way into the Zenshin 
Aikijitsu system within the Aikido system. Now these, these are not Aikido forms, but they are aspects of Aikido that has come in through the Zenshin uh, version of Aikido. Now, I will run through these forms and we will uh, discuss them briefly or in length depending on how it goes. So anyway, the very first form is Mawashite Kihonwaza Aikijo. Now, Mawashite came within the Zenshin Aikido aspects from my instructor in Kijitsu Kai Aikido. He got it through a different Japanese martial art and incorporated it into his Kijitsu Kai Aikido and I just ran with it. So this one actually comes from a, uh, a more karate-esque, uh, straightforward, uh, angular striking type movements. And that's it. Eight moves. Now it does have an application or a bunkai and we do practice and train that uh, but I don't hold people to this is exactly what this is or this is what this is. I will say well this is how it was explained to me. If you see something different fantastic. Uh, so there's that. <clears throat> the second one is the Zenshin Aiki, Aiki Jo Sonoich. Now originally this was the first form that made its way into the Zenshin Aikido, which is why the ending says Sonoich, because it's first the, the first variation of, but it became actually the second form trained, so if there's any misconceptions about that that's that's why that is Zenshin Aiki Aiki Jo Sonoich and there we go this one also has an established bunkai or two-person drill that uh, we do work on and again uh, does not necessarily mean that these techniques are one person fighting multiple opponents in that way of movement. Uh, they, they are simply various techniques drawn together to create one movement, but they don't have to work in that particular order. They, the, the techniques can be spread out. Uh, again, we have the third one, which is the Zenshin Juni. Now this one actually has its roots in the Filipino Kali system that I trained in the 80s. And I adapted the basic 12 from the system I learned back then and placed it into the Zenshin Aiki, uh, Aikido with the Jo instead of the stick. And there we go. So this one actually is a exercise or a uh, routine done to the nine angles of attack placed in 12 movements. So uh, it does not necessarily, it does not have a two person drill per se. Uh, you are just basically working 
on the nine angles of attack through the basic 12. Next, we have the Zenshin Jusichi. Zenshin Jusichi. Now this one, as it is, is the closest thing to an Aikido type form that we have in the Zenshin Aiki, Aikido system. Now, we do not perform a standardized two-person or bunkai with this particular form. Uh, I do not want or expect my students to do things the way I do things just because that's how I teach them. Uh, I want them to have their own thoughts, have their own uh, aspirations, and have their own version of what I teach. Now, once you get to this level, you should be able to start coming up with things yourself. You should be able to start seeing things that aren't necessarily pointed out to you. So, at this point, I do not desire to muddle or, or uh, cloud someone else's viewpoint of something with my particular viewpoint. I want them to start developing their own. So, I don't press upon them a particular uh, bunkai for these. I let them start finding things for themselves. Now I do suggest, hey, this looks like this to me or this looks like that to me, uh, uh, but what do you see? So at this point, once you get to this form, you should be able to start seeing that kind of stuff for yourself. Now, the next form is the Sanjusichi, the Zenshin Aiki Sanjusichi. there is the Zenshin Sanjusichi. Again, uh, there's no particular standardized this is this and this is that. Uh, by this time you should be able to start visualizing and formulating your own points of view. So, lastly, the last form is simply all of those forms combined into one long form. And that's the last form. That form is uh, demonstrated at Black Belt Test for the Zenshin Aiki Aikido. Joe forms are not required 
for white belts. Uh, Joe forms don't become a requirement until you are going to your blue belt. Once you hit your blue belt, each belt has one form and when you get to black belt, you have to be able to have all of your forms, any of the bonkai, and also your own personal interpretations of uh, these moves as well. Plus the last form for the black belt test is actually doing all of the forms combined into one. There are 87 uh, movements to the very last one and all black belts uh, will be doing uh, that one as part of their tests. Now, as far as weaponry is concerned, Aikido being from white belt to first degree black belt. Aikido uh, incorporates the Jo and the Boken uh, as far as uh, the weaponry that we use. The Boken is a wooden sword. You also uh, in black belt in the uh, early stages of gaining black belt or even possibly just prior to black belt you start working with a live blade. Now, the live blade mainly consists of katana uh, in the Zenshin Aikido aspects. Once you reach your first degree black belt, you move on to other aspects, and those other aspects also include other weaponry such as sticks, short swords, and uh, items like uh, sarongs, flexible weapons uh, of cloth and rope and things to that nature. So here is a small list, uh, a basic idea of uh, all the ranks within the Zenshin Aikijitsu. That includes the four ranges and the multiple different uh, martial arts styles and systems that has been incorporated into this. So from white belt to first degree black belt, you focus mainly on just the Zenshin Aikido. And I would say not just mainly, but uh, solely on the Zenshin Aikido. Now, uh, to go from first degree black belt to second degree black belt, you have to improve on all of your Aikido, but also you have basic techniques from your kicking and punching ranges, as well as basic weapon skills being from the Zenshin Ninshin Kage Kenjutsu, the Jojutsu, the Olisi, and also rope, scarf, and sarong weaponry. So uh, once you get your first degree black belt, and if you choose to, you can remain solely on one aspect of, of this art and, and stay with that. But if you want to gain a greater understanding and a greater skill, you have to really go through all four ranges of combat. So uh, once you get your first degree and you start working on your second degree black belt, then you have to start with the Ninshin Kage Kenjutsu, which is the actual sword work. Uh, the Jo Jitsu is the, the Jo, and the Olisi is the sticks. One and, one and two stick, and, and that is focusing primarily, not exclusively, but primarily from the, the Kali that I began in the, in the 80s. As well, uh, you also start working on rope, scarf, and sarong, which are flexible cloth and cordage weaponry, uh, along with the kicking range and the punching range. Because up until this point, the Aikido does not involve kicking and punching. We stick strictly to locks and throws. But now, to get to the second degree, not only do you improve on the basic Aikido, but you also now start adding kicking and punching to those techniques and uh, others that come along in, in that uh, Don rank. <clears throat> now, to go from second to third degree black belt, you will mainly focus on Kali aspects, the Filipino sword and stick. Uh, combinations of kicking, punching, 
weapons, trapping, and focusing on the olisi or the stick and knife. Uh, to gain the third degree, that's not exclusive, but generally the focus. Now to go from third to fourth degree black belt, uh, that's when you start focusing on the grappling. Now, <clears throat> grappling the groundwork, that does not mean Brazilian Jiu Jitsu. Uh, grappling is groundwork, but Brazilian Jiu Jitsu is not the only grappling system that exists. So uh, we do focus on uh, Jiu Jitsu, but not Brazilian Jiu Jitsu. Uh, Japanese Jiu Jitsu with Brazilian Jiu Jitsu, with Judo, with, with all forms of grappling techniques that, that are available to us. Now that in, its, in of itself is an entire system which I call EGADS, E-G-A-D-S, Eclectic Ground uh, Aikijitsu Defense Systems. Now, to go to fifth degree black belt, so to gain a fifth degree black belt, you have to combine all of the skills that you've learned from first degree to fourth degree skills in a cohesive and practical system of self-combat skill sets. So basically you go from the Aikido, the weaponry, the kicking, the punching, the trapping, the grappling, the Kali, everything that you've learned so far to fourth degree, you have to combine into a system that you are proficient at. <clears throat> to uh, gain sixth degree black belt in Zenshin Aikijitsu uh, is not solely uh, concerning techniques and skills for yourself. Uh, to gain a sixth degree black belt in Zenshin Aikijitsu is more about what you are passing on to the younger generations to progress and to improve everything that you already have and to pass on what you have. Once you reach sixth degree black belt, <clears throat> you should be decently aged as to where your own personal uh, experiences are designed to share to others so that they can gain from what you've already learned. That's where you're going to get your sixth degree black belt. You have progressed yourself to the pinnacle or as near as you can get to the pinnacle of your skills and now you are passing those on to others. It's not partially passing them on. It's not, you're still improving yourself, but you're going to help other people. At, at sixth degree, your main focus are others, not yourself. So you may still have improvements to, to be gained and by all means continue to, to gain those improvements. But the focus of the Zenshin Aikijutsu sixth degree black belt isn't yourself, it's everybody that's around you that you're teaching. And from there on, uh, it just goes by <clears throat> how much improvement you place into other people, how much experience that you have that you give out to other people. From sixth degree on is, is solely based on your desire and abilities to help everybody else around you. As well as far as time and grade, uh, is, it's very important to understand that Zen Shin Aikijitsu is not a black belt system. Uh, Zen Shin Academy is not a black belt dojo. Our purpose is not to promote people to black belt. That's, that's not our purpose. Our purpose is to teach and to pass on experience of practical and useful combat and self-defense skills. Uh, belts aren't important for that. 
they do exist and uh, I've done several videos on on my desires to not have belts in my system but how they did get there and why they got there 